the director of finance for passiveinvesting.com. You can read a little bit more about me and our the rest of our team at passiveinvesting.com's website under Meet the Team. Um, there we have listed everyone with a little pretty screenshot of or a picture of their faces so that you can recognize us um, at next year's convention. Um, while you're on our website, be sure to take a look at all of our current offerings to see what deals we currently have open for investment. Um, that's on this tab. And a list of all of our existing properties can be found on this tab. Um, if you want to learn more about PassiveInvesting.com and make sure that you get updates on our, our new offerings, just click join the Passive Investing, the Passive Investor Club, and we'll be sure to add you to our email database. Uh, okay, so is everyone ready to learn about how to select your investment management system today? Let's switch over. Oops. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to you about how to select an, invest, an investment management system that entails what kind of considerations to have, what I've liked about our system, and things just to help you think through how to select your own. So the first would be consider the uses for your system. Is that just for your internal management of your investments and your day-to-day -day operations, or do you want a fully comprehensive system that allows your investors to interface with that data that you're managing, managing on a day-to-day -day basis and have a profile that clearly lays out all of their information in a transparent manner with access to all of their agreements and everything so that they interface and um, all the information is seamless between both platforms. The next would be your various types of assets. So I've listed two here that we typically use for our portfolio, and that would be funds and single assets. Um, the fund structure, you need to consider um, what type, is it an open fund, is it a closed fund? Um, are you constantly having investors contribute more capital? Are you returning capital on a regular basis? Um, those, those considerations are necessary because that will impact your distribution calculations and um, your, your taxes at your end. The next and more prominent type of asset that we use for our multifamily properties would be a single asset. And um, that's where we set up a special purpose vehicle. We syndicate, raise funds to purchase the asset. And then the closing date would align with the closing date of the asset. Um, next, you wanna consider the types of investors. Are they accredited? Are they sophisticated? Is this, um, is this just another investment under their portfolio? Are they non-accredited? Will they need a little additional guidance and handholding? Are they institutional whereby they may need some regulatory guidance or regulatory oversight? Or are they bringing in large tranches of investors where they would need additional disclosures and transparency into their individual investors? Are they 1031 exchanges? Do you need to be able to track their basis? Are, were they, did you dispose of an asset and have, elect, have investors elect to 1031 exchange into your new property? All these things are necessary to think through to understand the level of sophistication of your system. Um, and as I'm going through here, please feel free to go ahead and post questions in the q and I will get to them at the end of the um, presentation. So the next would be your functionality for your management. This is your internal management of your investments. So the first would just be a high level asset management. You want a system that can clearly and accurately um, detail all of your, all your projects showing their total equity, their distributions. And it's very helpful if you have a way to export distributions by date so that you can get the year-to-date distributions or the distributions for one quarter or one month. Next would be the number of investors. Um, we have many, many investors that typically invest in 
a lot of our deals. So you need to understand what that number of investors number is telling you. Is that overall your, your total number of investors or is that an investor in class A of this project an investor in class A of class B of that project? Um, so just always know how, it's, how the system quantifies your data. Um, also important to include the closing date and the exit dates for the projects. Next would be your cap tables, which are highly important for your organization and sanity. Um, the cap table should show the investor's investment amount. It should have the number of investors that actually invested in that class, no matter if they invested in several classes in that project. It should include their capital percentage and their ownership percentage. And it is very um, amazing if your system can automatically calculate updates to that ownership and capital percentage so that you're not manually importing those numbers or having to go back and check the accuracy and completeness of those numbers again and again as, as um, the structure may change. The next item would be ensuring you have a a way to customize your class structures and waterfalls. As you get started, it is very helpful to have pre-populated templates. Um, that would be, here's a template to calculate the preferred return or to calculate the IRR or to calculate the split once you reach this IRR. But it's also nice to have a customizable option to expand upon your template. For example, if you're offering some type of bonus structure, or just an ability to further customize. Um, that's the same way for waterfalls. Templates are very nice to have. Um, I just spoke about waterfalls, so let me switch over to class structures. It's nice to have um, your class structures broken out, customizable, showing the ownership percentage per class. And um, yeah, so the next would be the ability to transfer classes and your ownership interest. So for example, for our debt fund, we offer the investors the ability to transfer from the compounded class to our non-compounded class if they decide they want to elect to start receiving monthly distributions just to have an income stream. So you wanna have a system that allows you to have a automated environment to make this class transfer that will retain all your historical activity including the original investment date, the original amount, um, their distribution, life to date, as well as a either percentage of how much they transferred to the new class, whether that's all or, or a portion. And um, yes, so just keep in mind the historical record keeping is crucial here. And then moreover, the ability to transfer interest. So a lot of investors will say, I'd like to transfer my ownership interest from this entity to this, to that entity. So we have the ability to, to do this automated in our system so that, again, it retains the historical information to show how long the old entity was invested in the entity, as well as when that ownership interest was transferred. So that makes the, the tax process at, at year end a little easier and also allows us to have a good record keeping process. Next, you want a system that can help you calculate your distributions. And um, the more straightforward and automated this process is to eliminate or mitigate the risk of human error, the better. So um, ours are very, very straightforward. We select a waterfall template, so it'd be class A preferred return. We already have the preferred return set up in our class structure. We already have the investment amount set up by investor and their ownership percentages outlined in the cap table. So when we go in and we calculate the distribution, all we do is we enter the start date, the end date, and when the distribution will be sent, and then it calculates it automatically. I will say we then do do independent checks because there's always a risk of um, when we create a new project, did we enter the the preferred return correctly, or did we did we make sure all of the ownership percentages are correct? So first distributions are always extremely crucial to make sure you're doing those manual checks to ensure the accuracy and completeness of the automated calculations. So once we calculate the distributions, the system will then 
request approval, and then it will post it directly to the investor's profile. So it will say your distribution for July is X dollars, and it will be sent on the 20th of, of the month. So it's, it's readily accessible for the investor to log in and see when they'll re receive their distribution. And then we export a batch NASHA file and upload it directly to our bank portal. And it is a very streamlined, seamless process that highly mitigates the risk of human error and makes our lives easier. The next item on this slide is very important and is the investor rosters. So you, it is, I can't stress this enough, but you need a system that keeps a organized and secure database that allows you to input all the relevant investor information. Um, I don't know how many of you have come tax season, tried to go through and create all these investor rosters yourself. Well, you should have a system that allows you to export all this information. So the investor name, the entity, the tax ID number, the address, investment amount, all current year activity, the contributions, distributions, dividends, and their ownership percentage, click export, and then send it to your tax CPA to prepare the K-1s. Um, there are aspects of our current system that need a little bit of improvement, such as if you were to invest through a single member LLC, which is known as a disregarded entity, um, the ultimate beneficial owner of that entity should be disclosed on the K-1. Currently, our system has not quite caught up to the new IRS regulation, so we are having to track that separately and then add that to the investor rosters before providing that to our tax CPAs. So we have identified this as a need for improvement, and our current investor management portal is working towards improving this feature so that we can include both the disregarded entity name, the associated tax ID number, the ultimate beneficial owner, as well as their social security number or um, EIN. So um, I appreciate that they're working towards a solution, but um, it is good to make sure that your portal has all the necessary fields for the preparation of K-1s. Or um, for example, one of our tax CPAs asked for the um, investor's name to be broken out by first name, middle initial, last name. Our investor portal doesn't show that bifurcation, so we had to run all these um, Excel calculations or formulas on the names in order to bifurcate those names. Fine, you can do it, but it's nice if you can go through those, those needs up front with both your tax CPA and your portal to make sure you can have one easy export and there's no need for manual manipulation manipulation before sending it to your tax CPAs. The last would be the ability to connect directly to your bank accounts. Um, so when we create a new project, we link it to our bank platform. So it associates the project with the operating account at our bank. And then um, when we run the distributions, like I said, we export a batch, a batch file with all the ACHs that includes our bank account information, as well as our investors. It's all in a very like encrypted format. And then we upload it into the bank portal and it's seamless, like I said, couldn't be easier. We don't waste any time sending individual ACHs. It's all smooth. The next consideration would be the functionality for your investors. So if you want a platform that's not just to manage your investments in-house, but also interfaces with the investors through their profiles, these are the items that you should think through. You want a clean, user-friendly profile. You want, it to, you want your investors to be able to easily log in. And if they have any issues logging in, you want to have support on standby that can deal with password reset or issues um, so that you're not trying to do that in addition to managing your investments. You want it to be aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing, pictures, clean, organized, in a good format. And you want your information to be transparent. Investors want to know general information, such as the project name, the associated entity name, the class they invested in, the um, location and the closing date. But they also want to see very specific information to their investment, um, to their investment. So the investment amount, their distributions to date, and um, 
similar similarly to what I said for our view, it is nice to have a feature that allows the investors to directly export their life to date activity so that they can see they invested on this date, their distributions were sent monthly on these dates, and we return capital on this date. Um, this has been very helpful for a lot of our investors when reconciling their own bank activity or when trying to understand their K-1s and verify the information is complete and accurate. Um, the next feature of the investor portal side of the investment management system would be a document portal. That's used to retain your PPMs, all your agreements, any transfers of interest, your financial statements, and all tax documents. Um, this might not seem necessary at the beginning, but as the numbers of investments and investors rise and the years progress, it's important that you have this database so that investors are able to just log in and pull the information that they need. Moreover, it's important to have the ability to filter because we have investors that invest through multiple entities. We have investors that invest, are invested in many, many of our projects. And there's just a whole wealth of data and documents that are associated with those. So if you have the ability to sort by project, sort by date, sort by the type of folder, whether it's tax agreements or other types of documents, and then also sort by the investor profile. So an investor might need to log in and just check on his investments under a certain entity for taxes or whatever, might wanna transfer all of his ownership interest into a new entity. So having the ability to trans to sort on that specific investor profile is very helpful. Lastly, um, the statement generation feature of most investor management systems is amazing. So you have the ability to create a customized statement. So you can go in, add your logo, add the types of data that you would like to see disclosed in your statement. And then with only a few clicks of the button, you select the template that you created, you select the projects that you want to issue these statements for, whether that's all projects. So a statement might include all projects you're invested in. And then um, the system will automatically generate these statements using the templates and the cap tables and all the backend data. And then it will ask you if you want to publish the statements directly to the profile, to the investor's profile. So it's all very automated, clean, um, it's, it's just a very nice feature and we're actually going to start using that at the end of this year. Next, I want to bring your attention to the importance of the support offered for your investor man or investment management system. Um, uh, first is the system's flexibility. So as as the structure of your deals become more complex, it's necessary to have a system that allows you to customize. I talked about the necessity of the customization for um, waterfalls and class structures. Um, it's just, it's going to make your life easier if, if you're able to say, okay, well, we can't just use this template. We wanna also add a bonus structure. How can we do this? And it might not be, a very inherently obvious option, but it's important to have support that you can reach out to to help walk you through the necessary steps to get to that end goal. Next, um, mistakes are inevitable. Everyone makes them, they're going to happen. Um, so it's necessary to find a system that makes the remediation process simple. So if you were to accidentally um, upload a distribution to the wrong investor, if you go back then and delete the distribution, you don't want to. Um, our, our team has once referred to it as create a glitch in the matrix. So it should just be a list of distributions. You go in, you delete it. The mistake is, has been remediated, move on, enter it under the direct, under the correct investor. Um, it's very hard to have a rigid system that makes you feel like you're scared to do anything because if you were to make a mistake, it's, it's locked in. So um, I've really enjoyed our system because it is very flexible and um, we've, we've made mistakes and we fixed them and we've moved on. The support team is crucial. Um, ours allows us to flag our, in, in, like our questions as 
very high importance, high general, low importance. So um, we really use those, those flags to help get the attention that we need. Um, I'd say that every question we've sent has been responded to within 24 hours, typically same day, um, or at least have been sent to the proper channel in which can answer the question. Um, you, you, it is ideal to have the same day turnaround response. Um, typically when you're doing something, you, you just need to knock it out that day. So make sure you have a, a large support team that is readily available to answer your questions. And then um, the next would be the ability to grow and evolve with your firm, with, with your investor base and your asset portfolio. Um, like I was mentioning with the IRS, the new IRS guidance about single member LLCs, we've alerted our investor management system. They're working on improving the, the um, fields that we can enter and um, they're constantly spitting out new updates and um, requesting new submissions for improvement so that they can implement our, our um, needs and improve the process. So um, again, don't use something rigid unless you have a very vanilla asset portfolio model and investor base. But I think most of us here are trying to also grow and evolve with the, with the market and um, stay fresh and young. <laughs> All right, so next would be cost. So obviously cost is going to absolutely depend on your needs, but things that you can think through as you're assessing whether the cost is right for you, is it a fixed cost? No matter how many assets you bring on board, no matter how many investors, is it going to stay a flat fixed fee or is it variable based on those mm -hmm. um, factors such as assets and investors? Uh, next, just think through the cost benefit of what you're currently doing. Are you wasting time manually aggregating your investor information for K-1s at the end of the year? Are you sending documents such as your financial statements, financial statements out via email to investors individually or via BCC when you could leverage a system that publishes them directly to the respective project in class that you know has been constantly updated and monitored? Are you manually inputting distributions at the independent investor level into your banking portal or have you automated your calculations and ex now you're exporting batch distribution files that feed directly to your bank? Just think about how much time you're spending on these things and if, if the answer is, oh, this could be automated or if there's a better way for it, then consider introducing an investor management system. Um, full disclosure, it is your responsibility to maintain the accuracy and completeness of your records. I believe the investment management systems are crucial to the success of managing large portfolios with the high volume of investors, but we have implemented manual controls to monitor the accuracy and completeness of the information in order to ensure that the um, system logic is operating effectively and also to mitigate the risk of human error because mistakes are inevitable. Um, so in order to, or the controls that we've implemented it are just frequent reconciliations. We reconcile the information in our system back to the bank activity and other separate databases that we use to track and monitor investment activity, just to make sure that all, that we can vouch and trace all activity back and forth across these various databases of information to catch any, um, any issues. So in summary, I've identified the following considerations when searching for your investment management system. That would be your uses, your types of assets, your investors, which I forgot to put in this list, your functionality to management, your functionality to investors, the support offered by the system, and the cost. And then just a friendly reminder, no matter how sophisticated the system is, it is ultimately your responsibility to ensure the accuracy and completeness of your records. So that is all. If you have any questions, I don't see any in the Q&A yet, but feel free to post them. And then 
as I wait for any questions to come in, I would like to just bring your attention. Oh, sorry, I do, I do have. So we actually use IMS, which stands for Investment Management System. Um, I like it. Um, there are like currently we're using the old investor interface for our investor profiles and we have the opportunity to switch to a new investor um, platform. So there's still levels that we can do better than we're currently doing. Um, we like it. It's they, the support system has been really great. I probably talk to them at least once a week. Um, they're highly responsive. And um, yeah. So I don't have a demonstration ready for you today and I don't want to use our current, I don't, because it, it includes sensitive information just with um, pertaining to our investors and our assets, but we can always set up a demonstration of the portal for another um, webinar. I have not used any other platforms, so I can't attest to whether there are other platforms worth considering. I know that we are going to start um, interviewing some other potential options, so I can respond to that question more thoroughly in the future. I'm sorry, the font was too small to easily read. We'll send out the PowerPoint so that you can blow it up and make it bigger and see everything that you need to see. So one question was, when building our teams and sourcing a resource to handle these internal responsibilities, what qualifications should we seek in an individual? So currently we have several of our teams working um, in tandem within our portal, we have our investor relations team and our finance department. Um, the investor relations team is the one that's going in and they're placing the funds, they're adding the investors, they're um, adding all the documents. And then the finance team is the one that goes in and um, usually calculates the distributions, runs the distributions, verifies the accuracy and completeness of all the information in the cap table, and then exports all the relevant information needed at year end for the tax prep. Um, I'd say that while qualifications, um, I wouldn't say that. So I, I think what you need in an in a ideal candidate to handle this type of information is someone who, is, who has high attention to detail, who is thorough. Like I wanna see someone who's keeping lists because there's often several steps that you have to do in order to, um, to complete a task. And a part of that is going back and checking your work. Um, for the reconciliation aspects, you need someone who understands the concept of, you can't just reconcile one population to the other, it needs to go both ways. That's how you check the, the completeness and the accuracy. So an accounting background for the finance department is highly necessary. Um, just so they understand those concepts. But from the investor relations side, I'd say you just need someone who's good at um, coordinating directly with the investors, um, also very organized, and you need your two teams, the investor relations and the finance team to work together. So my, I think I, I talk to the investor relations team probably like 90% of my day. We just constantly are going back and forth to make sure that all the information is getting into the system and we're doing the sufficient level of checks and balances to make sure it's correct. Yes, we'll make the presentation available to attendees. Yep, you were right, I'm using IMS. Um, thank you for all being here today. So our fee is very reasonable. Um, I, I'm not going to disclose it because I don't know um, if, if it's going to vary based on, on the type of business that you have. Um, we actually learned that our fee caps out after we have six assets. So that was very helpful to know. Um, so it was variable until the sixth asset, then it turned into a fixed fee. Um, can't say it won't ever go up, but it 
we found that it's very reasonable. Um, are there systems for new syndicators? Um, I guess I'm sure that there are. I would not so much go for seeking a new syndicator platform. I would probably go through one that's been vetted and has some credibility because the goal here, of course, is for you to not be a new syndicator any longer and to grow into your own um, firm. So just vet it out, think through the considerations I spoke on today and make sure the price is right for you. Um, Alvin, thank you for waking up at 5 a.m. and joining us today. Yes, we have a, an assistant controller, Eduardo. His name's JD. Um, you can find out more about him on our website in the Meet the Team. Um, we are not currently looking to hire a CFO, but thank you for your question. Yes, and that would be real page IMS. Any drawbacks? I, I touched on a few today. Um, and IMS is actively working on correcting the, um, it's not even an issue. It's just like our life could be easier if we have the option to enter or input this information alongside of the existing information. Um, there are some aspects of it that I wish were a little bit more customizable. Um, because right now we just have the templates for waterfalls, um, which they do offer some type of level of customization. But um, I, like I said, as you become more and more complex and have more um, bonus structures in your deals, there is a need to have levels of additional levels of customization. Um, did I get them all? Is there anything that I missed, guys? Feel free to repost the question. Okay, no more questions. So I'm just gonna bring your attention back to our Multifamily Investor Nation website. This shows you that our next speaker is Dan Hanford, our managing partner. He is a phenomenal speaker. Um, he's talking about how to accept international investors in your apartment syndication. So worth turning, tuning into. He's great. And I just want to thank all of you for joining us today and being so engaged. And um, I hope I can meet many of your faces in Charlotte in June 2023 Multifamily Investor Nation Convention. So see you there. Um, thanks for being with me today.